G'day folks. Well, I think we've got the little BOC uh, Smooth Arc 180 running pretty well. Uh, it's running straight Argon still instead of uh, mix. Um, BOC stain shield would be ideal. I'm running 0.8mm stainless wire. But it seems to run okay for straight Argon. And it's doing its job for now. I'd really want to avoid renting two cylinders. Um, but for now I'm just running straight compressed Argon that I use for my TIG welder. And it's running okay. I mean, I've done a little bit of tacking on this and I also did a bit of welding uh, the other night, welding up these little target plates. Uh, this is for our next shooting trip. Um, these have been through the kiln for heat treatment, but again, I'm trying to weld some very thick material with it. And again, it didn't do too bad. Using the wrong gas and welding P20 to stainless steel or 4317 to stainless steel, it did okay. So let's try and tack these little bits of uh, threaded rod in place. These are just acting as little uh, hinges for these swinging targets. Uh, this is one of the more serious little tests that I've given the welder. I haven't had much of a chance to really test it, which is a shame because uh, you buy a bit of equipment with the intention of using it and uh, it usually takes a couple of weeks to uh, find a really good serious amount of time to uh, test it out. But yeah. I'm going to uh, set the camera back and uh, see what we can do. This will throw sparks and again I've got to be on fire patrol because uh, I haven't cleaned the shop in a while but there's a CO2 extinguisher over there and there's a nice big dry chem on the wall so hopefully we don't set the shop on fire. But this MIG's pretty good. You get this MIG styled just right and you minimise the splatter and sparks. It works surprisingly well. So unless the floor is covered in combustible junk, it's not too bad. Whereas the old MIG that I used to have would spit debris everywhere and the arc welder was even worse. That thing started spot fires on the floor several times. But this thing's not too bad. It might help if I don't still have my grinding mask on. Ha, that is not going to save me from anything. That's right, this is where you stop welding, do some grinding and leave the wrong mask on. You only do that once. Right, now I've got the correct mask on. Not too bad. Still runs like crap with straight argon, but it's doing its job. I definitely need some uh, stain shield, but I don't think I can justify renting two cylinders because it's like $20 a month 
bottle rental just on that one thing. Not bad for what it is, but again, I'm, I am running it wrong. I'm not using the right gas for it, so the welds are coming out too hot and the wire's breaking too early by the looks of it. Yeah. With a cooler gas, a mix, a argon CO2 mixture, the wire will break later and I'll get much better range out of it because that's maxed out and it's sort of struggling with this kind of work. That's pretty normal. I've tried running straight argon on the uh, Fronius uh, TPS 2700 Australian Edition welder at work and it still struggles like this. Like it welds like cr absolute crap. No matter what you do it welds like absolute crap if you try and feed it straight argon. So yeah, it's no surprise this thing's struggling but it's doing the job for the time being. Um, yeah, once we're through the busy season and Christmas season, I'll probably look at getting a, uh, probably even before Christmas, I'll look at getting a bottle of, um, stain shield on my account. But, yeah, it's a bit hard to get good specialty welding gases without a, uh, company account, like BOC gases, Linda gases, um, Core gas any of those big companies you can get pretty much whatever you want but when it comes to owning your own bottle you can do it certain companies do a changeover with your own cylinder but you're limited to what kind of gases you get and I've heard issues about issues with purity as well so I'm gonna stick with um, BOC they're pretty good not the best for alley welding but this doesn't weld alley anyway so I'm not that fussed Anyway, that's just a few little uh, quick squirts with the MIG. The camera seems to have survived without killing its uh, little CCD. <laughs> I know uh, welding arcs and things aren't the best for a camera CCD, but... Nah. Who cares? It's an old camera. I can afford to punish it. So, uh, yeah. That's cool. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'm going to keep tweaking it. I'm going to keep playing with the uh, inductance and the voltage as well. I could probably improve things a little bit more just by tweaking the inductance and voltage, but without the right gas, it's still going to weld like dog shit. I think that was one of the better ones that I got. That one there and that one in the in the uh, valley. It's not looking too bad. There's certainly nowhere near as much black scale as you get with CO2, but you don't get the penetration that you do with a cooler gas like CO2 or argon CO2 I should say well oh, it's cracked there <laughs> oh that was where the tip I had the um I had the depth set complete or the arc length set completely wrong and uh that's what happened to the tip and that's what happened to the workpiece it's actually cracked all the way through the back of it but then this is Chinese 304 stainless so that's not surprising Oh, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Just a little derpy around video. <laughs>